Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Morning, everyone, and welcome back. It's been a busy week. Um, haven't been in the shop in a little bit because it was Canadian Thanksgiving. For those of you that don't know, we celebrate it uh, in October, not in November like they do in America, but we still eat uh, turkey and have pie and all that good stuff. Um, so I'm here at the shop this morning getting everything turned on and ready to go because even though it was Thanksgiving long weekend for us, I was still out buying stuff. <laughs> you know, always selling, always buying, that's the name of this business. Uh, so I've got to get my vehicle offloaded because it was a particularly full load of stuff and um, I open up in a couple hours. I want to make sure that the vehicle's emptied and some of this stuff is put away. So let's go check out the car and see just how bad it is. And thankfully there's no snow yet. That could change. Which I think it's supposed to snow in the next couple days. This is what I've got to contend with today. Um, a hot mess of a back of a vehicle, but there's all kinds of stuff in here that I think will make um, good items for sale. At least I hope so. That's why I bought it in the first place. Well, I'm going to move it in the store and then throughout the day, I'm going to price it, put it away. Uh, but I've got to offload pretty quick here because I have to go to the post office before I open as well. So I start grabbing stuff and bringing it out. There. Well, that looks terrible. I've pretty much just moved one problem from the back of my car to the store. But I do have places for most of the stuff here in the shop. I've been shuffling some things around. So I'm gonna have to go through, like these old projectors, clocks. <laughs> well, I'll show you what some of this stuff is as I put it away, because um, I think I picked some interesting objects and you know, we're recycling here. We're finding things that people didn't want and putting them in an environment where hopefully somebody else will pick them up and, and think they're cool and put them in their house. So. I'm going to start getting things unwrapped here and uh, we'll start getting this stuff all put away. You might be saying, Alex, what have you gotten yourself into now? I'm saying that pretty much every time I go out shopping somewhere. But what I bought today is a whole bunch of movie collectibles, memorabilia. I went back to the movie theater warehouse that I was at, I don't know, maybe six, seven episodes ago. Uh, and I had to go pick up some things that I left behind because I had some customers asking, well, what about the other uh, little movie graphs? And what about the other magic lanterns and things? So. I went back and I got some of the stuff that I left behind the first time. So I'm going to get some of this stuff put out. Um, there was a couple surprises there that I didn't see the first time around and ended up getting a few other really cool things. So uh, let's uh, sift through and see what old Alex pulled out of the uh, out of the woodwork this week. First up is an Ampro 16 millimeter projector. Let's unclasp it on either side off and you can see it's got this really sort of cool art deco look to it let's flip it around so you can see the other side there it is there this is kind of a bigger model this would be more like something you'd use at maybe a, a school you know watch your health videos or whatever on i'm gonna see if i can remember how to get this guy hooked up um i think if i'm not mistaken there's some reels that i got too these always look better when you've got the reels on there let's see that something like that and this I think it needs one more adjustment to bring it down it probably has a lock on it right like that there we go and then you get your reels on either side I'll go see if I've got some reels up at the front of the shop yes I do the fellow that I got them from was nice enough to even give me a film I have no idea what movie it is <laughs> but at least there's a film included See, that goes on like so, clamp it, get that back on the rail, it kind of came off the rails there a little bit, there we are, something like that, now let's see, what is this movie? 
Feature film number one. I wonder if it's an actual movie. Let's see if we can see what it is. Mm. Hmm. Hard to make out what this is. I think it said the Whitworth way. Who's to say frame by frame it would tell a story? I mean, that, heck, that could be a sunrise or something. But there is a picture on it, at least anyway. Let's get that tucked away. And we're just getting that set up more or less so it's a slightly better display than if it hadn't been on there. I think there was another one of these APRO projectors around here somewhere. I think that's what that is right there too. So we'll maybe just have one out on display and we'll put the other one, just leave it in its box and get it up for sale that way. I'm going to try and get rid of the big stuff first so it's off the floor and then uh, people can walk around in here because they might want to come and visit old Zoltar today or buy some socks and they can't do that with all this stuff piled here. This is a very early magic lantern. What a magic lantern was, even prior to movies, they would take big slides and they'd put them through, maybe they'd have some music playing, they'd light a uh, lantern inside to uh, project it through this lens and on your screen you'd be able to see um, a story unfold before you. Now this one is quite old, probably dates to the late 1800s or so. It has little claw feet, which one is broken, but we're going to mix up a little two-part um, JB Weld and we're going to see if we can hear that back on the bottom so it's not uh, footless because look, it's wobbly right now. So we'll flip it over and give that a bit of a fix. And while that's drying, we'll get the rest of the stuff unpacked. This is a little bit different than your normal Magic Lantern. A Magic Lantern takes slides, as we've established, this is a radio opticon or radio radio opticon. Anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> um, this doesn't require slides. You can actually project an image um, just by opening the back and placing it in front of it. So you could put a piece of paper, uh, you could put a photograph, and it would project it onto the screen. Uh, like I said, a little bit different sort of setup, but it works essentially the same kind of way. It's a light and it's projector. Uh, some of you might have had things like this for doing drawings. Some artists use them for projecting images uh, large so that they can uh, trace, copy, or paint. Anyway, it's a different thing. Um, definitely don't see a lot of them. It's a historical anomaly and not something that's uh, definitely <laughs> not in common use anymore, but kind of fun to find in the back of a warehouse somewhere. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think this whole bin is full of movie graphs and viewers let's crack this open and see yeah it looks like there's a pile of them in here some probably quite old a little chimney on that guy oh it has the wick still you could probably get some uh, fluid in there and light this thing up would have been quite the experience to have that warm glow and then probably needs a wick but anyway that sits right in there that's what gives you your light you close that up that's an old timer. And oh yeah, these are these are kind of the slides. This is what you would have used. So they're a little dusty and worse for wear, but see the images? You would have just slid those through one at a time and it would have told a story. Um, this is probably an entire story. They're actually quite beautiful, the artwork on these. So at least there's several boxes of slides that go along with them too so i can sell them as sets like that it's like the complete history of them here that's how i end up with a ton of things i did this once bought a whole bunch of steam engines eventually sold down a lot of them but i still have a whole pile left look at all the different varieties little guys big guys i left all these behind last time i didn't even really see them more slides A lot of times they're nursery rhymes or it looks like Napoleon almost. <laughs> Cute. And you can definitely tell these are not uh, not anything modern. These go way back. Like I said, some of these are from the 1800s. And there's a little guy in a bag. Pretty neat. Let's get these up on the counter and have to figure out what they're worth and price them. Don't ask me why I bought this. 
It's a toilet paper holder um, and it's a radio in one. You know, because when your hands are filthy, you, what do you want to do? Turn on the radio, right? I guess if you're bored. But the cool thing about this one is that it still works. So you can, uh, I guess, carry it with you. You know, go to the beach with your family, bring out your toilet paper roll holder radio. <laughs> it's a little transistor battery operated radio, so I guess you can put it anywhere. Maybe that's kind of a neat thing to have. I don't know. I thought it was weird, so I picked it up. Probably not a whole lot of these things out there. Don't know where I'm gonna put that thing yet. I'll set it down for now. They also had this massive key wound wall clock that was just sitting there all forlorn. Uh, I'm going to see if I can piece it back together, get the pendulum back on, which you can see is loose right now, which isn't a bad thing. You're supposed to only move a clock with the pendulum off anyway. Um, there should be an ornate piece for the top. Yeah, here it is right here. This basically goes in the top. So I'm going to um, see if I can make a home for that and see if I can make it work. I probably have some keys around here somewhere too. So uh, I'm fairly confident I can put that all back together and find a good home for it. Clocks are finicky and they're not at the same time. I mean, they all kind of go together the same way. Uh, and there's a trick when you get the pendulum on, which I'll show you on how to make sure it's level and balanced and ready to go. And I think there's the key for it in the corner there. Let's see if I can hang that pendulum and I'll show you what I mean. Got the pendulum on. And what you want to do before you wind the clock and get it going, see where the pendulum is in that little line right there? It has to line up pretty much exactly center over top. That means it's level. Once it's level, your clock should work. There's only one way to find out. There we go, time is set. I've only got 10 minutes before I open up here. And there she goes. So I'll see if it keeps good time throughout the day today, but at least I can uh, monitor it, check it for accuracy and let people know whether this clock works or not. And so far it seems to be working. Clock is up, I've got a few things away, still have a lot to do, but I guess I'll be finishing this up while the store is open because I've got some folks here early prior to opening. They're rattling the doors <laughs> like the walking dead trying to get in. Um, so we're going to let them in. Uh, they're just waiting in their cars for me to give them the wave. So I will continue this, um, pretty soon. I also picked up another one of these early turn of the century era, well, 1910 to 1920 kind of era spotlights. The reason why I like them, well, you can do them up. You can put them on a stand. They look really cool. You can use them as home decor, put a regular lamp inside of it. I have one here that has its stand. They're not overly easy to come by. And here I've got two of them, one slightly bigger and one a little bit smaller. And this, if I look in the inside, appears like it's all original. That's a carbon arc setup, which means that those two, there's two rods that connect and it, and it arcs and creates a very powerful light. That would put this somewhere around 1910 or so. Anyway, the lens is in good shape. Needs a little cleaning, but still rare piece of theater history. Someone who works in theater or film would probably like to have that in their house as a display and they'll take it the rest of the way, however they want to do it or finish it. So we'll get that on the shelf and put away. What is in box number two? It's pretty cool. 1950s, has that bronze sort of look. I have to plug it in and see if it's working. And it looks like there's a couple lanterns. That actually looks like a decanter. A decanter lantern. And what's this? McIntyre Porcupine Mines. Oh, that's neat. This would be like a, um, it's a coal mine lantern, but it's a small one. So like a salesman sample miner's lantern. Have never seen one of those before. Just fits in your hand. The real one would be about that size. That's really, really cool. What else is in here? Mm -hmm. I have some bits and pieces for something. Yep, there she goes, working away. I can put it out, say that it works. Cool looking little thing. The other thing that I didn't show you was what was in the cool little wooden box next to me. It is pretty special. This is a Fidelity sound motion picture amplifier hooked up to, uh, you can see it's got tubes and everything in there. 
a projector. So why would they have a projector in a little portable box like this? Well, if you were filming a movie and you wanted to see what you'd filmed, you might use something like this to check what they call the dailies. Or you could use this uh, to take around and uh, set up in case you wanted to show people a movie anywhere you went. So um, professional setup, this is a uh, 16 millimeter. You could have them uh, made to work for 35 as well. But a uh, cool piece of movie history and a fun thing to find inside of an old uh, box in a warehouse. And I have not tried plugging it in yet, but it looks like it's all intact and all complete. So uh, likely it would probably spark back to life with very little effort. Pretty nifty. I had sort of a brief look in this box and we've got a military cap. You can tell that's Queen Elizabeth, so probably 1950s or newer, little beret. This is a ringer for a antique style telephone where you'd have your call box separate and you'd have that set up somewhere else and it would make a ring. Put a little power to that wire and I'm sure these bells would just ring like nobody's business. But there also appears to be a whole bunch of 78 RPM records. Now, for the most part, 78s aren't as as collectible as LPs, but certain ones are, especially if they're bigger names or more popular artists. So we can see Bob Hope. Um, this is Perry Como. But if you find early Elvis or rock and roll, some of those albums can be worth hundreds and on occasion thousands of dollars. So it's worth going through the box to see if you get any treasures, which is exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm glad that I went through the 78s before deciding just to sell them as a whole lot because I found not just one Elvis Presley 78, original one, and I think this is what all shook up. Uh, another one, Don't Be Cruel. There's about uh, 11 of them total. And some of the Elvis records can be worth anywhere from $40 to a few hundred dollars each depending upon what one you have. But I had not seen this before. The uh, What's this one called? The, uh, the Down Homers. I mean, you got Boogie Woogie Yodel. I'm sure that's a lot of fun to listen to, but I just love that it's a picture disc. They didn't make a whole lot of these. A lot of times you found these on kids' albums, but this being sort of a country and western, um, it's kind of unusual. Just really great graphics, kind of a fun thing even just to hang on your wall. <laughs> so there's probably several hundred dollars at least worth of 78s that I pulled out of that box, and then we'll sell the rest off all in one big batch. So um, finding some good treasures, I'm going to keep digging. I, I thought it would be fun light one of these up and actually see what it does. I'm gonna put the lens back in, see if we can't project it. Look at the little smokestack coming out the top there. <laughs> Cute little thing. I'm sure this hasn't been lit in some time. This is the general idea. You have your light going inside, you put your slide through and it's meant to project a little farther away than this. I think my lens is a little bit dirty though because I'm not getting much of an image off of this. And then you're supposed to put each one through and it lights it up. Kind of like that. <laughs> you guys can see. Kind of cool. Anyway, it's neat that it still more or less works other than needing some little adjustments. Always fun to play around with these things <laughs> when the shop is quiet. Well, that's it. An end to another busy day. And how do I know it's quitting time? Well, because my clock behind me tells me that it is. And it's been working, keeping perfect time all day. So excellent news for me that the clock is working and I got it set right. So I'll let it chime away and, and gong in the background there while I get ready to call it quits for another day. Thank you so much for watching today's episode, guys. Don't forget to go online and check us out on Instagram at Curiosity Inc. Y-E-G, where you can see pictures and prices for some of the items that you see on our show for sale. Uh, you can also see the same stuff, plus enhanced content at our Facebook page, which is Curiosity Inc. on good old Facebook, Curiosity Incorporated on Facebook. So check us out, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys soon. And bye for now.